All right, so let's go through our trades here for this prior Friday. Not a super day, but nonetheless, let's go through the very first trade that we took Friday morning, and that was going to be short to gold. Now, technically, I should still be short this position, but I don't want to carry <clears throat> any trade over the weekend, so I did have to get out. But I do want to show you this trade nonetheless because it was a loss. And I entered um, shortly after uh, the opening bell. That trade came in around 9.40. Uh, it was a pairing pattern short. This was my short down over here. I ended up holding this all day because never hit my reversal, never hit my profit target. Um, and I actually got out at the end of the day because I wasn't willing to hold on to this any longer. So um, I went ahead and got out uh, around 128, 129, something like that. So ended up taking a loss on uh, this first trade, as I can show you right here. So I've condensed everything to make it a little bit easier for everybody to, look, to see here. Did lose $542 on my gold. Uh, I do want to show you the Mini Russell, show you what happened on the Mini Russell. That was my uh, my biggest loss, but I really killed it on the Mini NASDAQ one. It ended up giving me just a beautiful day on, uh, on the indices, but still just a really tough day. And I had to get very aggressive to make any money on Friday. So um, anyway, let's go through, uh, let's take a look at that Mini Russell first. And I'll show you how I got whipped around on that uh, Mini Russell trade. All right, so here's the mini Russell trade. Um, I like, as you know, I do like my HF1 pattern, which is a nice little setup. One of my favorites, actually. Um, and Russell, actually, is one of my favorite markets to trade. So, um, but unfortunately, uh, it just didn't work out. So I had a nice little HF1 uh, short over here. And when we rallied up, I went ahead and I think I may have still been in this when I mentioned that I was adding. Anyway, I added to my short uh, on this pullback, but I did have this stop and reverse sitting up here because that was setting up another HF1 buy. Whenever I get an HF1 buy, okay, right after an HF1 sell, I, these are usually really good trades. Well, today it didn't work out. So I did go ahead, took my loss on this. I did reverse. And then it came out, hit my stop, and I went ahead and I exited my buy. Okay, so adding on, I wasn't, uh, I didn't feel too bad adding on here because typically with an HF1, you can go ahead and add. And you see a lot of times that these HF1s will just collapse. You end up doing extremely well. And you'll see that I actually did that in the mini NASDAQ. And I'll show you how it really worked out. But um, but in the case of the mini Russell, did not. So um Took a short, got stopped out, took a buy, got stopped out, and that's it. So I went ahead and exited, took my loss, and that's how I ended up uh, losing the 3600 But pretty much did the same thing on the mini NASDAQ. So that was the one that saved the day. Let's look at the mini NASDAQ. All right, so let's take a look at this mini NASDAQ trade. This was a perfect trade. This is what I was hoping was going to happen on that mini Russell. So we had an HF1 short, just like we had on the mini Russell. But in this case, it never hit my stop and reverse, but I was able to add on this pullback over here. Then it finally collapsed, came down, so I was initially short, added on the short, and then it finally came down on this nice little push down here, and I went ahead and hit my target, and I exited on the short. That is what ended up making my day on the... Uh, on the indices and um, so made a little bit there let's see natural gas I made a little bit on the natural gas now the natural gas I had a carry over from Thursday and I was able to take a, a small profit on that and then I ended up having another short on natural gas throughout the day made a little bit on that not a huge day but still came out ahead on that so overall not a bad day on uh, on these indices and some of these commodities. So let's take a look at uh, the stocks. All right, here's the stocks. Uh, so, but before we get started, uh, don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button and also the like button. If you like these videos, I'm trying to do these recaps every day so y'all can get an idea of my trading style. Once again, all these trades are done live. 
Uh, and also, um, they are done after the first hour of the free broadcast. We do take this into our live trading room and we continue to trade on focusing, continue to focus on a little bit of stocks, but moving more into a little bit of the, uh, the Forex market. Uh, haven't had any, uh, I haven't had really a lot of Forex trades here recently because the markets have not really been giving me a lot of really good setups. So, so I've been mainly just trading some, uh, some futures, some commodities and these stocks. Friday start off a little bit slow, uh, with FARM. That was on the first trade on FARM. Can't we, can't recall what, what pattern this was. I didn't mark it down. I should have. If I don't mark it down, I do forget. But anyway, it was by, had an upper target up here, thought we were going to hit it, but as you can see, we were really thin here when I finally hit my target, but it did fail right after the opening and uh, hit my loss and went out and got out of FARM, took a loss of 155. Uh, let's see, you also saw me take uh, SNOA uh, as well. Let's take a look. SNOA came in about seven minutes later after this trade, so let's look at SNOA. So this was the second trade I took SNOA, which um, once again, um, just ugh, got real close to my first target here. I mean, I, probably within one or two cents, I would guess. Uh, it didn't hit it. I was long. Never never got into a, reserve, a reversal area. But once we broke through and then I saw this failing again, we couldn't get through. I mean, not even within pennies. I went ahead and ended up getting out, <clears throat> and uh, I mean, basically, I just picked up a couple bucks, not much on that, and then, what was the other one, uh, and then the final one you saw me take was um, XELA, and that was my nice trade for the day, so let's look at XELA, took the XELA trade, what did I put this on, put this on, uh, I got this on around 9 36 so let's look at that all right so here's XCLA entered around the 935 936 was an HF1 buy uh, when I put the trade on I think I only had a couple targets here um, but as the trade started to develop I started getting a lot more patterns now once I entered it it did hit um, it did come up and hit this level fairly quickly in about uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, but see, it wasn't doing anything in here, so I was fine with that. <clears throat> but then it fell. Then I started getting a lot more patterns. I had one, two, three, four, all four patterns. Now, the only reason I would hold and not just get out at this first level is because what happens a lot of times is when I start getting additional patterns developing and all of them, Einstein is projecting all of them kind of within an area. In this case, it was between 540 and uh, five and a half. That's usually a good indication that the market's going to get pulled up there. All right, so I like to see the clustering when Einstein starts uh, projecting targets, and they're all, even though they're different patterns, they're all kind of projecting kind of in that same uh, same area. Could I've held on to it longer and made more? Yeah, but you know, hindsight is always 2020. So once we, uh, once we started taking off again and it went through this, um, this second level up here, this was the first right here and then it went through the second. Then I went ahead and decided just to get out of it. Yeah, I left some on the table, but, uh, being a Friday, I didn't really want to put on a whole lot of risk. So, uh, what else? So we also did a little in, uh, WEBL. Once again, just scalping a little bit of WBL. AHI and WLDS. Once again, if you're in our live trading room uh, and also the new Discord channel is coming out, uh, we will be also providing these trades. So if it's something you think you're interested in, we'll provide uh, the setups. We're also going to give you the Einstein targets and where we think the market's going to go. And then it's basically, uh, I like to wait until I start to see some volume coming in. Once I see the volume coming in and we get that interest uh, in these stocks that are on my watch list, then I'll go ahead and I'll wait for that first setup pattern. I'll get into it. And then sometimes we have two or three that happen all at the same time. Sometimes you're kind of like a domino effect where you get one and then a second one, then a third one and a fourth one. And, uh, and then that will give us multiple levels to take a look at in getting out of our, our target. But I like to enter on the first pattern 
And then if, like I said, if I can get additional targets, um, then a lot of times I'll hold and see if I can get more out of the trade. So anyway, that's it. We'll be back once again Monday morning. Uh, please be sure to join us. If you have any questions, please visit my YouTube channel, Innovative Trading Strategies, or my website, InnovativeTradingStrategies.com. We'll see you Monday morning.